I broke my nose twice when I was a kid. Um, the first time, I think I was like nine. My brother, uh, we were in the pool with a cousin, I think, and my brother was um, flipping me. And, uh, you know, you get on your shoulders and sort of flip back. I guess in the course of talking and, and flipping, I don't know, we s sort of had gravitated more toward the shallow end. And he flipped me back really hard, and I hit the bottom of the pool, and it just um, took off the this huge layer of skin. It was bleeding, blood everywhere. And, I, you know, I, of course I was crying. You know, who wouldn't when you're nine years old and you have a broken nose and blood gushing from what seems like everywhere. I remember him just calling me a baby. <laughs> I was really mad because it hurt so bad. Of course, uh, we didn't go to the doctor. No, no, no. That would that would be silly because my mom never took us to the doctor unless we were bleeding from the eyeballs. And it was close, the nose, but not warranted a trip to the doctor. Then in, I think it was high school. Uh, so... I think I was 16, 17, something like that. I was in um, PE, which was fine. It, it was okay. We were so we were in PE and uh, we were shooting baskets and, and the we were in line to shoot baskets and then we'd move up and so I was. I don't know. Um, I was not at the beginning of the line. I was three or four in, I think. But the way everybody was standing, I, we were sort of staggered. And somebody threw the ball and it hit the rim and just shot back in our direction. And uh, by the time I heard the call for, uh, you know, heads up, all I saw was orange. And then bam. <clears throat> It broke my nose as well and of course again we didn't go to the doctor because we didn't I had the black eyes and yeah it was lovely uh, so you know I've got this nice you can't really you can sort of see it's just a little it does its own thing right and okay whatever I just I just lived with it it was it was one of those things you just I didn't really like it. I don't like my nose. I don't like my profile, but that was just, you know, it it is what it is. And then years later, I had trouble, uh, you know, breathing through my nose. My my septum was just, um, yeah, it was it was bad. So I was having trouble breathing, and I, I, you know, I tried all the remedies. I tried the breathe right strips, which worked okay, but don't ever 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 go to the beach, be sunning all day, and then wear one of those at night. Because I don't know if it was the combination of the sun, I don't know, sun, the lotion, I, I'm not really sure. But uh, the next morning when I went to take it off, I... Uh, like every morning, I just took it off. Uh, well, this time, uh, several layers of my skin came with it. And, and so I had these, uh, where the tape was, this, you know, nice, attractive, beautiful little raspberry on my face. And it hurt like hell. And then, you know, you're going back to the beach. So it was like, yeah, not, not good. Not, I don't recommend it. So I got to the point where I just I just couldn't breathe. I couldn't really sleep well at night. It was it was affecting my life. So I decided to go get uh, my septum straightened out. And I thought, you know, no big deal. Uh, a friend of mine recommended this ENT, and I went to him, and he's like, oh yeah, you know, it's really crooked. We'll we'll get that squared away, and no problem. And um, yeah, your nose is gonna it's gonna feel like you have a cold. It's gonna be congested, and and. You know, I'm like, oh, all right, whatever. And he says, well, do you want to straighten out this, you know, the bone? I said, no, no, I, I just want to breathe. I don't care about that. I just, I just am interested in breathing. I was so stupid. I don't know why I didn't think to have that done then. Because, yeah. 
So, I, you know, I go in. No expectations. I have no idea what it's going to be like. And I wake up from the surgery. And, of course, you have, to, you have to pee before you can leave the hospital. That's just what they do to make sure everything's functioning okay. So I, I go get up to go to the bathroom, and I look like Miss Piggy. They had um, shoved some stuff up in there, and in my nose was, you know, it was just, it, it was, they really should warn you when you go in, because it, it seriously looked like I had a, a snout. It was, it was, it was startling. They packed my nose with what I can only say as two tampons. There was the string and everything. It was, yeah. So I had the string taped to the side of my face, and then it was completely packed. And I don't know about you, but I, I cannot sleep if I can't breathe through my nose. I just, I can't. So it, it was, the first night was, was dicey because I just, I couldn't sleep and it was, it, I was miserable. And then the next day, um, I went to the doctor and he was going to take out the little things. Um, and again, really, they don't, they don't really, uh, um, inform you as to really how things are going to be. And I, I can, I just wish that someone had shoved two tampons up his nose for 24 hours so he would know what it's like because it's, it's extremely unpleasant. Um, and then he said, well, there's, there's, there's no real good way to take these out. I just, I'm going to be honest with you, which is never a good way for a doctor to say anything ever really. So, uh, he says, uh, okay, you know, lie back and, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to take these out. So he takes the tape off, he gets the string and he, he kind of pulls one leg back and he gets some leverage, which also is not, not, not really good to see, uh, from your doctor. And he yanks the tampons out and I, I pretty much go with him and the tampons. We, we all fly forward because, uh, yeah, I, I've, I, I would venture to guess that no one has ever had a cheese grater shoved up their nose and moved around, I would hope. But if I had to compare it to anything, that's the closest thing I can think of. Uh, yeah, I felt like I was being pulled inside out. It, it was, it was, it was awful. And I, I just remember sitting there with this most dazed and stunned look on my face, uh, trying, trying not to weep. So I, you know, I didn't sleep for like five days because I, again, I was so clogged. I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. I was, I was a wreck. It was, it was, yeah, it was awful. And, and then I think, you know, now why, why I, I hate my nose, right? But there's no way in hell I could go get my nose fixed at this point because I can't, and perhaps maybe in the 10 years since it's been since my surgery, um, they have improved the whole uh, you know, tampon issue. And maybe they don't use those anymore. But I just, I can't take that risk because it was so unpleasant. And I just, I kicked myself for not having my nose straightened out at least. Even though, you know, this part of my nose is my great-grandmother's, not, not the crooked part. But what scares me is I remember my, gra my great-grandmother in her later years. And I always remember, wow, she's got such a big nose. I guess that's a uh, payback for saying my great-grandmother had a big nose. We called her Nanny. I mean, I, I never said it out loud that, wow, Nanny's got a really big nose, but. You know, it's one of those little observations. You're like, hmm, wow. Yeah, payback's a